Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. Today we are going to be talking about the disappearance of a young man by the name of David Barclay Miller. Now this case really hits home because David was from my hometown, my area, the same if we had been in high school at the same time, he was older, we would have played sports, we were in the same Concord district. This case actually takes us out to central Arizona. This is where he actually ended up disappearing. But I want to give you a little background on not only the area, but also David himself. David had become highly interested in the wilderness at a very young age. Now, David was 22 years old at the time of his disappearance, about 5'11", 160 pounds. He was wearing a t-shirt, shorts, black hiking boots, carrying a forest green Gregory backpack. He had sandy blonde hair and blue grayish eyes. David was always into athletics. His coaches from an early age said that his teammates almost always picked him to be a captain. He had two siblings that had both died at a young age from a rare bone disease. His parents felt that it was this that really led David to really want to experience the full nature of life. When he was in his teens, he went up to Maine and he had to do this kayaking trip by himself in order to pass this course and he said that that was pretty much the gateway to all his other expeditions. I mean by 20 he had already hiked and traversed through some of Alaska's deepest snows. He had been up through the northwest. He had hiked many of the trails, parts of the PCT. So he was actually just overjoyed when he got up, accepted, excuse me, to Bates College in Maine where he studied theology. More specifically, the Sundance of the Lakota Sioux, and he would say, peace and love you to your brother. He was just a very, very kind young man, so he was absolutely ecstatic when in April of 1998, he was hired by the U.S. Forest Service out in Coconino National Forest in Arizona. More specifically, because of his experience, he was hired as a wilderness ranger. Unfortunately, his time there didn't last that long, where in May of 1998, May 19th, he was told his co-workers that he was going out on a hike, a couple day hike. His co-workers reported seeing him on May 19th at the Beaver Creek Ranger Station. They said that he left a note saying that evening he was going into the Red Rock Secret Mountain Wilderness. Now this area is full of manzanitas. It can be very dense. There's lots of canyons and cliff. Unfortunately, that was the last time anyone ever saw him. He never returned from this trip and he was never seen again. His vehicle was found abandoned at the Volte Arch Trail. This was weeks later. Unfortunately, this is something that I didn't really quite understand with this case because based on the research and evidence, there wasn't a really big search for this young man. I'm going to get into it. However, the main search that that got going right after they realized that he was missing lasted about 12 days. That search was called off for a while due to the heat and other conditions. It was really only his family and friends that were out there searching. However, the case did get sort of a resurgence a couple of weeks later, and this prompted both the local county sheriff's office to get involved in the search, and they sent out roughly... 50 different officers and various search and rescue personnel in this vicinity to look for David. Unfortunately, though, even with this continued and resurgence of the search, they came up with no clues, no other evidence, which was very bizarre because this man had been all over the world hiking, kayaking, climbing. He was very experienced. It seemed like he had just sort of disappeared into thin air after going out onto this two-day hike the first chance he had. It was only a month into his employment there. He was familiar with terrain like this. He had experienced it some in his life, maybe not as experienced as other areas like the Pacific Northwest, the Northeast, Alaska. However, he was very experienced. I mean, he was only 22 years old and he was hired as a wilderness ranger. But unfortunately, even with these added efforts, they came up with nothing. Obviously, this was very sad and very disappointing to everybody involved, and even his parents were just shocked that there was no sign of him, no trace. They said that there, why wouldn't there be some article of clothing? They said they knew their son. He was a very, very experienced, like I've said many times, 
and it was just baffling. Unfortunately, the weather in these areas can be very sort of frenetic. It can go from being extremely hot during the day, but then into the mid 30s, even it's in summertime during the night. So unfortunately, if you were to get injured, if you were to fall, have a break of any kind, not have the proper supplies, you could really get in trouble very fast. But again, David knew this. Not only were the searchers and David, wherever he was, were fighting what is very difficult terrain, this area of the park, that's park, excuse me, is 44,000 acres. So even if you had hundreds of people, it is really difficult to search an area that vast. With this search, unfortunately, because of the limited resources, they were only able to search a very small part of it. They do have certain formulas that they use. Obviously, they can calculate average foot speed over land or that type of terrain without transportation. They were just unsure how David could have gotten outside of their main search grids. Even after another search got launched with 20 people of the Forest Service volunteers that wanted to go out and find their co-worker, that was also unfortunately a total loss because they didn't find anything, no clues, and the mystery just remained. Honestly, after reviewing all the facts that I could find on this case, unfortunately there isn't a lot of information out there, but I did dive deeper into the archives, into old newspaper articles. The weather was pretty nice around the time that he left. Not only that, as I spoke of David's past, he was out in the wilderness in his early teens. He had survived a lone kayaking trip where he had ended up on an island up in Maine. He had been through just a lot more rugged conditions than this. Now, I'm not saying this area isn't rugged. Obviously, you can see that it is from all these pictures. Even the authorities and his family, like we've discussed, no one could understand how there was no clue or no sign of him. The last thing that they had was that note that he left at the lodge, the ranger station, excuse me, for his co-workers. There was no sign of any foul play anywhere. There was no sign of distress. They couldn't even find any footprints. How bizarre is that? Unfortunately, David was eventually declared deceased. They did have two ceremonies for him, one here in the state of Virginia in his hometown and one in Sedona, Arizona, where he went missing. They even actually renamed one of the trails in the Coconino National Forest. And of course, they named it for David Barkley Miller. David's friends and family said that he was a just wonderful man. He had no intent on personal glory, always played for the team, led by example both on and off the field when he was younger and into his adulthood. He always seemed to care about living life to the fullest and honoring his brother and sister. My thoughts and prayers go out to David, his friends and family. I'd like to dedicate this video to David Barkley Miller. I also hope and pray that one day his family will get the real answers of what actually happened to David. I want to thank you all for watching, as always. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. I will see you all in the next one. Now, I wanted to discuss a little bit about the calendars. Unfortunately, the place that I had been getting the calendars from, they, of course, after 15 years, they went out of business. So now I have to find a new place where I can create my custom calendars, put it together for you all. Well, I've already contacted a few places, but their prices are a lot more expensive. Now, they did say that if you order in bulk, they'd give me a certain discount. I'm going to show you guys in my upcoming video some various calendars. There's, they have a desk model, which is a lot cheaper. The wall calendar, for some reason. I'm still trying to find a couple other places. So if any of you know a place where you can like online design a calendar and... Uh, buy in bulk, please let me know. Send me a, tech, or a comment or an email. I'll have my email in the description as always. I'd really appreciate it. I'm also going to be doing a giveaway at the beginning of this year in 2023 in January just to sort of commemorate 2022. I know it was a rough year for me and I wasn't able to upload as much. So I bought these silver coins. I'm going to have some pictures here for you and I'll discuss on how I'll go about doing the drawing for that. But I will be giving one to a male and one to a female. These are both one ounce of pure silver. They come with a commemorative case, a certificate of authenticity. I bought them both from the U.S. Mint. They are absolutely beautiful. I'm looking forward to a great year in 2023 with you guys. 
See you next time.